Hey, what's up? Okay, so today I wanted to talk about a quote a little bit. Okay, compare the 1912 photograph by Lartigue of a woman in a plumed hat and veil, race course at Nice, with Arbus's woman with a veil on Fifth Avenue, New York City, 1968. Apart from the characteristic ugliness of Arbus's subject, Lartigue's subject is just as characteristically beautiful. What makes the woman in Arbus's photograph strange is the bold unselfconsciousness of her pose. If the Lartigue woman looked back, she might appear almost as strange." End quote. Okay, so first of all, I'm quite impressed that Susan Sontag seems to remember off the top of her head these two lesser known works by these two otherwise quite different photographers. As usual, she is calling Arbus's subject ugly, which I find unnecessary and trivial. I'm not going to comment any further on this because I spoke at length about it on the last episode linked here. My apologies for the low res image of Lartigue. I've searched for a better one, but I wasn't lucky. Let's break down the quote a bit. What does she specifically mean with unselfconsciousness of her pose? The way I see it, there's two reasons why a subject might look like this. One is not being aware they are being photographed, and the second one is being caught reacting to a camera being pointed at them. This second situation doesn't give the subject enough time to perform a quote-unquote pose, and often results in an unflattering photograph. This is how Bruce Gilden catches his subjects, for example, suddenly and violently. <laughs> The Arbus's lady does seem to be engaging with her to a degree and smiling at the camera. So what is this unselfconsciousness Sontag is writing about? Right before the bit I quoted, she wrote, Most Arbus pictures have the subject looking straight into the camera. This often makes them look even other, almost deranged, end quote. Whilst I don't agree with this, let's focus on the contradiction she's suggesting here. It's fairly standard to portray people looking at the lens, right? So why are Arbus's portraits the exception? Sontag, unfortunately, doesn't give us a reason. There's also the fact that she calls it bold and self-consciousness, which seems a bit of an oxymoron. But this is hinting at a quality in Arbus's photographs she writes about earlier on in this same chapter. But most characters in Arbus's Grand Guignol appear not to know they are ugly. Arbus photographs people in various degrees of unconscious or unaware relation to their pain, their ugliness." End quote. So, the relation she is actually pointing at is within themselves, not with Arbus or the viewer. I'm not sure if photography can reveal the way a person perceives themselves accurately. Just to quote Sontag, uh, you know, photography can only provide a pseudo-knowledge about the surface. Again, she doesn't break down what it is specifically about Arbus's creative choices that makes her subjects look like this. I can suggest a few reasons why, in this particular photo, this person looks slightly disengaged with the viewer, which possibly contributes to this perception. Her eyes, for starters, are not looking at the taking lens of the Mamiya twin lens reflex. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar with this camera, one lens is used for composing and focusing, this one right here, and the one below has the shutter and actually takes the photo. When photographing people, it's always a good idea to tell them to look at the taking lens, the lower one here. Otherwise, you end up with something like Arbus's portrait, um, where the subject is looking just off, a little above. It's kind of like having a pimple on your forehead and having someone hyper fixated on it instead of making eye contact. The second reason why she might look disengaged is that the smile seems slightly uncomfortable, as if she might have been just about to relax it or right before fully engaging it. But I have also photographed people that that's how they smile, so <laughs> you never know if this is part of the bold and self-consciousness of her pose that Sontag writes about. I mentioned this briefly when talking about Arbus and timing. While her photos are not strictly about the decisive moment, a lot of them do seem to catch those in-between instants. She welcomed them, and that is such a trademark of the medium. You couldn't really catch in-between expressions with painting or drawing, for example. A similar subject, also photographed by Arbus, illustrates this more clearly. 
woman on the street with her eyes closed from 1956. When I first looked at this image, I loved the accidental nature of it. She might have been caught while blinking, but she looks like she's being beatified or reaching nirvana or something. The moment was so fast that it seems that Arbus couldn't steady the camera for it even. Okay, huge tangent here, but I really want to quote this little thing by Brian Eno. I think it's a beautiful quote and it relates to this photo. Whatever you now find weird, ugly, uncomfortable and nasty about a new medium will surely become its signature. The excitement of grainy film of bleached out black and white is the excitement of witnessing events too momentous for the medium assigned to record them." End quote. Back to Sontag. So the people in Arbus's photographs are aware they are being photographed, but they're not conscious of the way they look, according to Sontag. This is something we have to deduct here, and she makes this whole matter even more confusing when she conflates looking at the camera with being unselfconscious when she writes, if the Lartig woman looked back, she might appear almost as strange. So contradictory, right? Like, as if there is a direct link between looking at the camera and not being aware of the way one looks. I wonder if Sontag ever actually grabbed the camera to photograph a person as in a portrait sitting, which I thought would have been kind of essential to write an essay about portraitists. <laughs> so what are the main features that render these two subjects so differently? Here's my little list. Pose focal length, crop, point of view, light, clothing, build. You might be saying, but Juan Sontag did talk about the pose. Well, pose refers to the way a subject is standing or sitting. It has more to do with body language than facial expressions, which I think would have been a better term to use when comparing these two images. I only list it here to point out that on one, the pose is a feature, and on the other one, the main focus is purely on the expression. Actually, the way the woman in Lartique's photograph is holding her hand is almost stereotypically feminine and demure, like in a painting by Fragonard or something, which renders the subject in a more traditionally flattering way. Okay, let's unpack the rest of the differences. Focal length. Arbus's image looks like it was shot with an 80mm lens, a standard focal length for a square medium format. Lartigues looked like it was shot with a longer lens, somewhere between 70 and 125 on a 35 millimeter system or equivalent on whatever format he used. This is assuming the images are not cropped. What really matters here is the distance to subject. This is what defines how proportions are rendered. The further away we are from a person we are photographing, the less their proportions will be distorted by optics. Wide-angled close-ups render proportions like a caricature, and while an 80mm lens on a medium format is not wide-angled by any stretch of the imagination, it definitely isn't the first choice for a portraitist wanting to make a flattering close-up, while Lartigue's is. Crop. Why is cutting off a person right below the neck differing to cropping them below the waistline? Well, crops highlight features in a person because we can selectively make a specific part of the body or face occupy a larger portion of the frame and thus highlight it or conceal it. In Arbus's close-up, the lady's double chin hijacks the show in a way it wouldn't have had she received Lartigue's crop. It's also highlighted by these echoing curves, but that has to do with a different property of images. In comparison, the neck of Lartigue's subject is rendered longer, partly due to the contrasting outfit with the background, but also because it is objectively longer. Either way, this consideration comes second, as most people's eyes would gravitate towards her hat and plume, which is awarded the upper half of the frame and emphasized by the way Lartigue titled the image. Point of view. This is probably my only pet peeve with this camera. To shoot at eye level, you need to stand on a chair or a little ladder or use a very heavy prism here. Uh, with the waist level finder, which is what Arbus used, you're always shooting from below, which can be flattering for full lengths, but not so much for a close-up like these ladies. Lartigue seems to be shooting at eye level. Um, anyone out there 
know what gear he might have been using. Clothes, not so much to say here that I haven't hinted at before. It seems that Sontag selected these two images because both ladies are wearing veils. Well, it is a similarity. Lartigue's subject's dress is more fitted and in conjunction with the crop, it outlines a silhouette with more curves that don't come across merely as a bunch of circles. Light, while they're both backlit by the sun, Arbus's subject, like many of them, is lit by an on-camera flash that gives it this sensationalist clarity associated back then with newspaper stories or forensic photography. While frontal flash can be flattering, it rarely is when coming from below. Lartigue's subject's features are softened by the shade. Build. These two ladies are built differently. This is just an objective truth. Whether you want to take that as flattering or not, that's 100% up to you and your upbringing. Alrighty, that's it for today. Hope you can all use this breakdown to replicate references provided by a client and get paid. Okay, see you next week. Have fun. If you like the contents of this video, please like, subscribe and all that. See ya.